Trapped in their home, it's the family sacrifice just to keep baby Bronte alive. Bronte's been diagnosed with a rare condition, meaning the Hamiltons have to live their life in a bubble. But a daring overseas mission may change that. Ten little fingers and ten little toes. Four-month-old Bronte is a picture of health. But this isn't a normal newborn bubble. It's extreme. This precious baby girl is cut off from the world. As COVID lockdowns were lifting and the nation was opening up, the walls were closing in around the Hamilton family. They've been trapped inside their Newcastle home because leaving the house could be a matter of life and death for little Bronte. Mum Emma, Dad Jake, brother Caius and sister Willow have barely travelled beyond this fence for four months. And when we meet, my crew and I keep a safe distance for Bronte's protection. Hi guys, how are you all today? Sorry about the distance. No. Yeah, <laughs> it's this fine. is our little world. So it's been about 18 weeks now that you've effectively been in this bubble? Yeah, this is our life, just trying to manage the three kids and live in our little bubble and keep Bronte safe. When our friends and family are being generous yeah. enough to drop I things off for us and fun. toys and meals and things, they That's drop it off at the gate and we just got to stand back here and say our thank yous. 13 days after birth, Bronte was diagnosed with severe combined immune deficiency, commonly known as SCID or bubble baby disease. How did doctors explain it to you at the time? So at the time they told us that Bronte had, basically has no immune system. She has no B cells or T cells to fight off any form of infection. And as something as a simple little cold or gastro could end up be, being life-threatening to Bronte and we could lose her. Emma, there's so much emotion and anxiety that comes with being the mother of a newborn, even at the best of times. How did it feel for you to hear that news? It's pretty daunting, scary, very overwhelming. Not having an understanding of what it was and the severity of it, um, and then trying to just obviously juggle the three kids and the newborn. Paediatric infectious disease expert, Professor Robert Boy, says skid is inherited, rare and deadly. If you are born with skid and not recognised, and then you get persistent severe infections, close to 100% are dead by two years of age. Emma and Jake are thankful Bronte's condition was at least detected early through a newborn screening test only recently introduced in New South Wales. And that will give them a heads up because um, having a healthy child with skids is better than having a child that is already unwell um, having skids. The family quickly locked down, pulling Caius and Willow out of daycare. Caius, give Willow a turn of singing. Go. Jake, an engineer, works from home. <laughs> While Emma, an emergency nurse, juggles Bronte's weekly injections and infusions with the never-ending demands of toddlers. It is difficult for them to be stuck inside and not, I can't take them out to playgrounds and to parks. And that was likely to be their long-term reality until Emma and Jake learned about a breakthrough in skid treatment. So we've been working on stem cell gene therapy for this particular kind of skid for over 20 years now. And more recently, we've developed a new way of doing this using a different technique. Dr Claire Booth is among experts from Great Ormond Street Hospital in London and the University of California, Los Angeles, who've developed a groundbreaking new approach to gene therapy. We take the patients, the child's blood stem cells, so those are the cells that form all the cells of the blood system and the immune system, and those are the faulty and not able to produce a working immune system. So we use a virus to carry a working copy of the gene that's defective into those blood stem cells, and then we give the corrected cells back to the child, and those cells will then produce a healthy immune system. It's a one-off treatment and potentially a lifelong cure. We reported uh, that we've treated uh, 50 patients and all of those patients are alive and well and over 95% of them have a corrected immune system now, meaning that they can stop treatments that they were on, they can go to school or nursery, they can have a pet, they can just kind of do all the things that a child would want to do. 
all the things Emma wants for Bronte. So next month, they'll embark on a life-saving mission to the UK, where she'll be one of the first Australian babies to undergo this cutting-edge treatment. It's such a, a big journey for you and Bronte to be undertaking on your own. How are you feeling about it? Uh, nervous, a bit apprehensive, scared, looking forward to it, knowing that it's it's there to help Bronte and hopefully be a cure. But um, yeah, there's all the emotions that you're running through knowing that, you know, trying to get my daughter some life-saving medical treatment whilst also leaving Jake and the kids behind for so long. It doesn't come without risk. Running the gauntlet of the airport is a challenge in itself. Yeah, so we're hoping that we can get through the airport as quickly and as safely as possible. And then once we're on the plane, we just have to be careful. Until then, this tight-knit family is looking on the bright side, even relishing this time together. <laughs> Have they been uh, welcoming of baby Bronte? Uh, yes, yes, it took a little while for this one to warm <laughs> to um, Bronte. Uh, Kaius loves Bronte and smothers her with lots of love and kisses, so I think he's going to miss her the most when we're gone. Hopefully it means in a, in a year's time she'll be a healthy, normal child and be able to, yeah, be able to hang out with her brothers and sisters and, and cousins and everyone. Well, let's hope so. An online fundraiser has been set up to help cover the family's living expenses in the UK and we will keep you updated on Bronte's progress.